Hello and welcome back to Yoga by Paige. In today's practice, we are going to slow things down with a little bit of yin. And this particular flow will be really great for people who have been sitting for a long time. So this might be good after a long days of work, sitting at your desk, or even after a long day of travel. I've tried to keep it pretty prop minimum so that you can do this just about anywhere, particularly if you are traveling. I did grab a block in, in the case that you have one where you are, and I will use a rolled up mat. So also if you have this around, sometimes hotels actually provide these. So if you're in a hotel, you can use a, an extra mat also. Um, and that's pretty much all you should need for this particular flow. Um, when you're ready, we will just start in a child's pose. So take those knees really nice and wide here. Bring the big toes to touch. And we'll start to just crawl ourselves all the way out into child's pose, allowing the forehead to rest down on the mat. Your hips can hang heavy back towards your heels. You can imagine this blanket of gravity just laying over the entire backside of your body. Taking a few moments here just to let go. Checking in with the body. Noticing where your breath is and the quality of that breath. Maybe even paying attention to the texture of your breath. And just beginning to see if you might be able to smooth it out. And then from this child's pose here, we'll keep the hips down exactly where they are. Just start to press your right hand into the mat. Go ahead and look up enough that you can start to thread your left arm underneath. So you want the left arm to be above any breast tissue you might have. And then you want the chin to be above the arm. So it's kind of right here in this area between your neck and the chest. And you can choose to open the right arm out so that you get a little bit more twist here. Or you can close down this right shoulder, keeping your forehead down. Yogi's choice here, one will get you more of a twist sensation and one will get you more of an upper back release. We'll just stay here for about five breaths. Notice where you might feel tight in the body. See if you can continue letting go. And then we'll start to press this right hand into the mat to help us lift up and out of this. Go ahead and stretch that left arm out. Maybe take a pause in the middle, just feeling this slight shift from side to side. And now this left hand here can press into the ground to lift your chest up slightly. Thread the back of the right hand down into the mat. Again, above any breast tissue you might have. And then allow your chin to hook over. And same options, you can keep the forehead down, closing off this left shoulder, or perhaps you want to take the twist by putting the right ear down and opening up. Either option is really great. It just depends on how you feel today. I'm gonna stay with the closed down version for the upper back. Dropping in here to any sensation you feel Finding some stillness in the body. And last one here. And start to press this left hand into the mat. Begin to peel your right arm out. Just pausing for a moment in fully extended child's pose. Feel that slight invigoration through the upper back. 
And then on your next inhale here, moving slowly to support the chest, begin to walk your hands back. You can close the legs a little bit here and we'll set ourselves up for dragon pose with our right leg forward. So you can just bring this right leg forward here. And if your knees are sensitive, you might think about using a towel or a blanket underneath that left knee. What I sometimes find is if you slide it back enough, you can actually get on top of that kneecap into the meat of the thigh there, and that will actually provide enough cushion. So while you're here, you can pull the chest up first, let the hips hang heavy, feel like the pubic bone is dropping down towards the mat, and then walk your hands out enough that you feel like you can use those as a little prop here. Begin to tuck your chin to your chest and let the head hang heavy. So you're draping your chest over this right thigh. You can start to tap into the sensation through that left groin, feeling as we stay here a little bit longer, potentially into your psoas. Using your breath to drop in deeper and deeper with each exhalation. One more cycle of breath here. And you can begin to peel that chin up off of your chest. Press through this right footprint to shift the hips back just slightly here. Walk the hands back and then you'll tuck the toes and sit your heels onto the knees for a moment of constructive rest here. Just feeling this shift from side to side. Noticing what's going on in your right leg compared to your left. And this broken toe here will also bring a little bit of sensation to the feet. Good, yogis. Let's go ahead and set ourselves up for the second side, dragon. You'll shift forward to bring this left leg forward. Maybe sneak the right foot back a little bit further so that you can get to the top of that kneecap there, feeling the thigh meat connect with the mat. And then walking your hands out so that they are more like kickstands or posts here. Then you'll begin to drop your chin to your chest, hanging out here in your dragon pose. Letting the head hang heavy. Feeling the hips get heavier with each cycle of breath. pubic bone drops into the mat. Seeing if you can drop in right away. Tuning into those sensations through the groin. Going so deep into this that you can actually feel the psoas. One more breath. And begin to peel the chin up off of your chest, pressing now into the left footprint here so you can guide those hips back just a little bit, walking your hands back and then tucking your toes for another one of those broken toe stands, feeling this constructive rest. Then from here, we'll just go ahead and sit our hips to one side. We'll bring both legs out in front of us, setting ourselves up for Janu Shirshasana A variation here. So you'll bring the sole of this right foot into the inner left groin. 
The left toes will be flexed and pointing towards the face. And now we'll spin our chest open to the right leg. So your chest is orienting out to the edge of your mat. And this left hand will wa walk down inside of this left leg. You'll feel the left elbow connect with that thigh. You can bend the left arm, rest your head there, and then you can either let this right arm hang out in space. You can find a half bind, or one of my personal favorites here is to actually drape this arm up overhead and just hang out here. So you should feel a pretty nice stretch all through this outer right side hip into that QL. And of course, you're likely feeling some of this into that left hamstring as well. Feel free to close the eyes and let the body just drop into this. Feeling the support and stacking of your joints to keep the chest upright just enough. This hand that's draped over the head, begin to energize that, lifting it up and reaching it towards that back of the right hip, drawing the chest upright, maybe using your hand to lift the neck up away from the hand there. Pause with an upright spine. And on your exhale, we'll gently unwind to center, extend that right leg long. Take a moment here to feel the difference and the sensation that you've created in the body. And now we'll draw this left leg back, setting up for our second side here. So the sole of the left foot is on the inner groin here. You'll pull the left shoulder back so that your chest orients over the left knee. And then this right hand will walk down the inside of that right leg. The elbow connects and that helps you to roll the chest open. You can start to bend this right elbow so you can rest your head in that hand. And then decide where you want this left arm. Again, you have the option to let it hang. Sometimes that actually feels pretty good on those muscles back there. You can drape it over the crown of, or the top of your head here. You can also find that half bind. Something that you feel like you can rest into that doesn't take too much effort. Then just drop in here to the stillness right away. Connecting into the sensation of the stretch between the left floating ribs and the top of your left pelvis there. Of course, feeling it now in the right hamstrings. And if you have some tools, you're of course welcome to prop your, your elbow up a little bit if this is too deep for you. That can be nice as well. We'll slowly start to energize this top arm, lift that left arm up, use that to reach back, reaching the left hand towards the back edge of your mat, coming into that upright spine, using your hand on the head to lift it up, and then gently unwinding to the front, extending your left leg long, just to kind of feel this for a moment. And then if you have a block, you're welcome to use a block or even two for this. Or I'm actually going to choose the rolled up mat. It's kind of nice. It's a little bit less intense from a bolster. Um, of course, if you're using a block, you can come into this medium setting, perhaps using a second block as a little pillow. 
So where you're going to want to place your tools, depending on what you're using, is right at the bottom of where the rib cage starts there. So you want the bottom edge of your tool to land right at the bottom of the rib cage. Then you'll drape your chest over. Reach your arms out wide into a T just to kind of feel some opening in that chest. It's really nice and gentle. The legs can be in any orientation that you choose. They can be extended or perhaps you like a reclined butterfly. Hmm. Just dropping in here, feeling that lifting through the center of your back. The ability to glide the shoulders down away from the ears. Noticing that it doesn't really take much here in these postural muscles to relieve the pressure. So you're welcome to stay in this pose if you want to for a little bit longer or if you want to find a flat Shavasana where you remove your props and extend the legs or maybe even insert your roll instead underneath the thighs, you can. We're heading into the last bit of our class together. So make any adjustments or cover your eyes. Situate yourself so you feel comfortable and supported. Noticing that though this practice is short, it can be very sweet and nourishing to the body. We don't always have to have these really lengthy practices to reap the benefits of movement and stretching. Take one more breath here. And when you're ready, you can start to bend the knees, plant the feet flat on the mat. And then depending on what kind of closing posture you decided, you'll have to gently roll off of your props. And when you're ready, go ahead and do that. Pressing yourself up into a nice, comfortable seat. Drawing hands to heart center, eyes closed with a bow in the forehead. In gratitude for sharing your practice. The teacher and the light in me honors the teacher and the light in you. Namaste. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me, Yogi. If you liked this, feel free to let me know what felt best for you in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for weekly videos. And I would love to connect with you on social media. You can find me at Yoga by Page in all channels. Namaste.